being poverty stricken, don't care how much money you have, it you always remember it. Can't forget it. Poverty. Yeah. You're right. But I'm not afraid of it. I'll I'll go back. I'm not afraid of poverty. You would go. You would go back to living in Brownsville. Absolutely. And you would be fine. I'll be great. In the projects. Yes. Well, I'm not gonna live in the projects. I'm gonna live in the <laughs> slum houses and shit. I ain't gonna live in the projects. Uh, and you'd yeah, be fine. I would have to be fine. Okay. Rosie, you also grew up in New York, right? I don't have to shame. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't have to shame like most people. You may know. I just don't have that shame. And then, um, and then Brownsville, I would be a beast there too. Right. I don't have I shame. I don't have shame about it. It's that for me, it's it's the danger element. You know what I mean? That I would have to. You're different. You're a man. I'm a woman. No, it's a different. It's, it's, it's a different listen, dynamic. It's tougher women down there than me. You know the deal is that. Um, I'm from there, and no one's gonna chase me out of there. Right. Welcome back to another episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Adam Wilkes, CEO of Tyson 2.0. I'm Mike Tyson. And today, we got Rosie Perez here with us. Hey, Rosie, how you doing? I'm good. Long I'm time good. no see, babe. Yes. Um, I see a whole lot of things you got here. Oh, your accolade, first lady of boxing. How did that come about? That's a debate. Okay. Uh, you know my cousin Sixto. Um, he he w- would call me that just as a joke, and um, and then we were up at the uh, International Boxing Hall of Fame. I was gonna be I was gonna be the Grand Marshal, and I came in, and Joe Calzaghi. I I, can't, I never know how to Kazaki. say it. Yeah, he was there, and I said, oh, my gosh, champ, it's so nice to meet you. And he goes, yo, we lost. You don't even know who the hell I am. I said, yes, I do. And I got, like, really, like, angry at him, and he was laughing. And then Al Bernstein was passing by, and then we sat at Al Bernstein's um, table, and Al Bernstein goes, you're the first lady of boxing. And Sixer goes, I called her that. And he goes, okay. But I'm calling her now. That and then he said it on Showtime Boxing, and it oh, stuck. Oh, he blew you up. You got blown up. Yeah. So it's um, Al Bernstein's fault. Rosie, when was that? How long ago was that? Oh my gosh, that's a long time ago. I think maybe, maybe, 2008. Oh, we saw you around the fights. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you around the fights. I love I love going to the fights. I see, I see. I, I used to be to... in the nosebleed seats, and then I worked my way down. I did that too when I was eighteen. I watched Roberto the Ram fight. I started way to way the top, and I came all the way down. And I was screaming. I saw him wave. I thought he waved to me, and they. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Look at you both now sitting uh, ringside. I mean. Yeah, that's crazy. Did you ever um, sneak down, even though you had a nosebleed seat, and then you see people, like, leave empty, empty seats and no, kind of sneak um, down? Somebody that would know me from class would say, hey, might come in and say, one of the commissioners let me sit front row and stuff. I never had problems getting to Madison Square Garden. I always got in free. Always got in free. In that, uh, yeah, especially when my mentor was alive, always free. So what else are you working on these days? You got a few new shows coming out. Uh, a Ooh. lot of shows. Yeah. Now and then. Now and then is 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 um that 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 show almost killed me. That show is like real real dark. It's a it's a crime drama, and um, I played the uh, detective. Yep. And I um, asked the director. I said I would love to accept your offer, but it's not enough for me to do. You got to make this more of a media role for me, and. And he says, well, well, let's think about it. I said, well, I did. And I, I said, here, I wrote stuff up for my character. And he liked it and he put it in. But it was really dark and heavy because I said, there has to be a reason why she's so obsessed with catching the bad guys, you know. Um, and I said, so what I wanted it to be is that her older brother was wrong, wrongly accused. And he got a life sentence out of it. And he ended up. And then they added on, okay, then we'll have him, like he ended up committing suicide. suicide in his cell. And I said, oh, my God, that's so great. So close there, yeah. Yeah, but it was heavy, like, to work on. But I loved it. You're, you're going to love it. It's it's so good. I, I believe being an actor, you have to be objective to your role and just do it. Yeah. If that's, an actor, that's what an actor does. He do his roles. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a lot of sacrifice, too. No doubt about it. People think acting, once they see the finished product, they think it's fun. They think that's, hard, that's back-breaking work. It is. It is to me, lot. acting is back-breaking work. Yeah. I saw you, I saw you on, in the, on stage, so yeah. that was hard. Yeah, okay. But you had so much fun. Even when you were me I me you messed up a line and you cracked up, and you said, I fucked up. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, you did not. It was fucking hilarious. Oh, God, yeah, that was fun. I like to be on, I just love the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stage. Tell me about this um, big award you accepted an honor from Obama. What was it like meeting the president? That yeah, you accepted an honor from uh, Obama, right? That has been mind-boggling, huh? It wasn't from Obama. Okay. That was wrong. It was from the um, uh, National Hispanic Caucus. Okay. Um, which is a, a very, very powerful political group, and Obama was there. And, and when I was receiving the award, and, um, and we clicked, and when he became... That's when he was Senator Obama, uh, uh, Barack Obama. And then when he became... Uh, president, um, I got vetted and, and asked to join the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV and AIDS. And so I actually worked an, on, on his administration. And so that, that was crazy. Did, what was that like? Hard. It was a lot of work. It What's was like some painful stuff. Yeah, because I was on the prevention committee thinking of ideas to help with that, and it, it was a lot of paperwork, a lot, a lot of pencil pushing, and, you know, but we did it. We came up with the national age strategy, our, our council did, and, but it was hard, hard, hard work. Yeah, that's almost impossible. Can I, uh, can I ask, this is thir a 30-year anniversary now for this year for White, uh, man, white can't man Can't Jump, right? Yes. Tell me about that, please. What was it like working put with Wesley Snipes? Put that on, put that on, put What was it like play. working with Woody Harrelson? Um, and then I also heard there's a remake, a remix coming back, like a remake of. Yeah, they haven't they haven't casted my role yet. Okay. Um, or uh, uh, that's it. So I, but that I, I believe they casted um, Woody's role and Wesley's role, but they can't find me. So I got I gotta say when Gloria, I a big crush on you uh, when you were Gloria oh, back in the <laughs> early nineties. Then it was. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun though. That that was a lot. We had a little bit too much fun. A little yeah. too much fun, you know. Like there it. was on breaks. They would say, "I think it's time for a cup of tea and a souffle," and that was code for the fellas were gonna go off and get high. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, and then they would come back to work and they were stoned, and and I was like, "Really, guys, really?" And they go, "You don't want to join?" And I said. Don't you want to wait till after we work? And they Listen, go, no. they don't do that anymore now. When you're on a set, you don't get everything, all the food or the snacks or the steaks or the, anything you want is on set. You can't leave no more. You have to be, you're in prison until the show is over. I think cannabis is also a lot more accepted now too, right? You can actually yeah, smoke. You can, free in the, you can smoke in the, um, on the studio, I believe. Yeah. No, you can't. These days? I mean, now that it's legalized and it's more... Common and accepted. Isn't that a rule? Is there a rule? Did I you find, find out the rule? To, a rule in the studios? You can't smoke. Look at your phone. Let's check. Are it we out. able Are to smoke? Up? Are you cannabis to smoke? On the I, yeah, every studio is going to be different. You're in a studio now. We can spark up here. Uh, yeah, but this is this white is, people's <laughs> studio. There you go. White okay. Jewish people's Fair studio. Enough. Enough. Okay, in Hollywood. <laughs> you can't smoke like on a Warner Brothers lot. Yeah, Jewish white people. Warner look Brothers, up, buddy. Look up, look up, <laughs> look up in your phone. Oh my God. Look in your phone. <laughs> No, you can't. Well, we're trying to find out right now. Let's see, Warner Brothers. Yeah, the cigarettes. Let's say cigarettes. cigarettes. Lie a little bit. It might be um, cannabis. Oh my God! No, I, I, no, that that hasn't helped yet. Yeah, but when you go, when you work in uh, Europe, when they take a lunch break, they they come back drunk. Yeah. They like drink. We need to get they're them not, some Tyson 2.0. They're not too cool. Convert them, they're not too convert cool them over. With cannabis <laughs> or some other place. Yeah. No, they're not. No. In Spain, they Interesting. are. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, but not like in um, Slovakia and shit like that. <laughs> Slovakia. <laughs> Chetnia. You can't do it. No, you, you chop your head off if you smoke some weed in Chetnia. Why would you go to Chetnia? Everybody needs the opportunity to smoke. Oh, my God. Talking about smoking. You're high as fuck, guys. Uh, Mike, you see. pussy, baby. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> That's great. 
Gentlemen, Father's Day is just around the corner, and our friends at Manscaped are here to ensure all father figures out there are looking daddy material this June. Manscaped's performance package 4.0, which includes their signature lawnmower 4.0, is the perfect bundle to tackle any and all old men's hair from head to toe. This right here is no dad joke. Manscaped is designed with fathers in mind, and a performance package 4.0 is here just in time for your pop's special day. Inside this package, he'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserve ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all of his goodies. First off, let me start by saying the lawnmower 4.0 will be the official MVP of Father's Day. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 400K LED spotlight he needs for a more precise shave. Does your dad use the same trimmer for his body and face? Ugh. Let's throw that out the window and give him the upgrade he deserves. But wait, there's more. Manscaped just launched their brand new boxes 2.0. We all know dads love their comfort. With summer just around the corner, the boxes 2.0 are here to save every father from the uncomfortable heat. These new boxes are packed with revolutionary features, including the jewel pouch, designed to cradle his boys in their own special space. This right here is a game changer. Whether he's mowing the lawn, taking out the trash, or golfing in the sun, these moisture wicking boxes breathe without breaking a sweat. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. And again, that's 20% off with the free shipping at manscaped.com and use code POTBOXING in the house all day long. Happy Father's Day to all the present fathers in the world today. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you've seen one of my favorite stoner movies of all time, uh, Pineapple Express. <laughs> Never saw that. Tell Come me on, that. please put on Pineapple Express for. I love Seth Rogen, love James Franco. How was it working with those guys? It was great. Yeah. It was great. They're as good fun guys. as they look. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Yes, they're good guys, but they work real, real hard. Yeah, okay. but yeah. Are they stoned uh, during their film while they're working? Majority of them. Uh, so beautiful. it was me, yeah. Kevin Corgan. Um, uh, James Franco and one other guy, we were the only ones that weren't stoned. Everybody really? else was stoned. Everybody James else Franco stoned. doesn't smoke? No, he's sober. He's straight. Well, yeah, he was. I didn't know that, okay. Yeah, he had a, he had a, a, an issue, and so okay. he had to uh, get sober. He had to see Cena, baby. Okay. Yeah. So, but they're, they're real good guys, this and we had it. a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's um, uh, James Franco plays his weed dealer. Right. It was good. I'm, he sells him weed and then gets into trouble with, with the drug dealer. And yeah. you're, you're the crooked cop that comes in. And exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great movie. Yeah, it was a Great good movie. movie. You're not going to sit here and watch the whole movie. No, <laughs> no way. Sounds like you want to, Mike. I just want to see her part. My part is not too. Yeah. You won't, you won't be able to find that. Anything. Oh, don't play Watch What Happy's Live. Oh, that. There you are. <laughs> that was James Frankel's idea, the fight scene. Mm. That's the cop. <laughs> he wanted to bite me in my, in my breast, and I said, no. He goes, what about the ass? I said, okay, you can bite me in my ass. Does he bite your ass here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Mike, did you say you've seen this or you haven't, you haven't seen this? We're going to get stoned in my house and watch this then. That's a good one. Oh, that was the other guy who wasn't stoned. I forgot his name. He's a great actor. The guy fighting uh, um, Rogan? Seth Rogan. Yeah. 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 So out of the entire cast, four people were sober. That's too funny. Gary Cole. Gary Cole, Gary great, Cole. great actor. Really funny. Yeah, that hurt. I remember that. <laughs> 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 
What's what's Kenny Powers? What's his name again? Um, Ken- Danny McBride. Danny McBride. Danny McBride. Yes. Oh, he's, he's funny. Yeah. He's he is so funny. Yeah, that hurt too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you get older, those stunts they're not they're not fun. They are not fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Solid performance. You fucked you up. You fucked me up. And that's Kevin Corrigan. He's good too. He's very, very good. <laughs> you heard me yeah. shoot him. <laughs> 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 So you won. You've also you were nominated for an Academy Award as well, right? Yes. For what? For this movie called Fearless. It was based on a true story about a a, a plane that crashes in a cornfield, and it, it was about the survivors. And um, I was one of the survivors. But in the movie, my baby died uh, from the plane crash because the flight attendant told me to hold my baby instead of buckling up, and the baby slipped from my hand. And I have a Nervous breakdown, and um, so another heavy film. But that's that's what it was, and it starred Jeff Bridges and Isabella Mussolini, and myself. And that took five months to shoot. And uh, but that that's that was the one. That was the one. That's impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. Oh, thank you. And you know, that the heavier roles are easier for me, in a weird way. But yet they're they're much harder. If that makes sense. Yeah. What is your goal? I'm sorry? What is the goal that you have for yourself in this profession? Um, my goal? Nobody has ever asked me that. That's not what that's your purpose. Oh, my goal is is to strive for excellence. I mean, I'll never be perfect, but I can at least strive for excellence. And I my goal is just to keep doing good work, but also to keep opening doors because they treat, you know, Latinos like crap, you know, they marginalize us a lot and, and everything. So I've been fighting for like really good roles. And a lot of times I have to say no to stuff that are, is just crap. And, and um, so those are my roles, do good work and open more doors. I guess that's all of our purpose then. Yeah? Yeah, because the first person I guess that ever wanted to be a scientist saw a scientist, right? Everybody see what they want to be. I, I saw Muhammad Ali. I wanted to be like him. I saw Robert Durant. That's my uh-huh. destiny. Right. So you, whoever, yeah, everybody, that's all of us. We all have a destiny. Yeah. Without even knowing. Yeah. But I wanted to be a scientist. A scientist, really? Why? Why? Because I almost drowned at Seaside Heights, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dark people. And, and so I wanted to become a marine biologist. I wanted to be the female. You're right. I wanted. I saw Jack Cousteau, and I loved that. Remember Jack Cousteau? I met him very well. Yeah. And I wanted to be like him, and um, and so I was studying that. But then I met Spike Lee, and my whole life changed. Yeah. Mm, so. That's something. Yeah, it was something. I was glad. I'm glad he found you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But it was weird. It was weird getting into this nah, profession, but I love it. Um, we were talking um, in my master class. You know, um, some people just touch. Some people are in this earth for a purpose and, and f- influence people, whatever it may be. But there's always some people that's different than others in that perspective. Not that they're better. They could die like game mess, but just they have special qualities that most people don't have. Right. Yeah, that's just what it is. Yeah. I also, I also, one of my goals, too, is to continue being, I know this sounds weird, but to continue being, like, loved and being able to love and, 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 to, and to be happy because, like, my childhood was such shit. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to, like, 
like continue to keep rising above that. You know what I mean? And and a lot of people like they they chase the money, and I do love money. Money is great to have, but like the cliche is true, it doesn't buy you happiness. You know what I mean? And I just wanna. I wanna. It depends. I, it depends. Your definition of happiness. What do you mean? Well, you said money can't buy happiness, but it depends on your definition of happiness. Okay. Well, for me, it helps with the happiness, but, you know, it's not a complete sale. You know what I'm saying? For a sense of insecurity. You think you have money, you could buy your way out of everything. You know, you, it's impossible for you for you to die. So what's the really the purpose for having money? Because the richest man in the world can still have his house blown up. True. You know, he can still die and he has all the money in the world. So what's really our purpose for money? Why is that our driven goal? I don't know. Well, Mike, you once said you could have all the money in the world and still have nothing. Exactly. And we were talking about just having no loved ones or having, you know, people around you to support you and be with you and... Again, money in the end doesn't buy happiness. You're right. No, but no money, how... money, the good, good thing for money for me is security. Because my when wife you go says poor, the same thing. Yeah, it's how all does, about listen, security. How does security? You have you put it in somebody else's bank, right? Me? Yeah. I invest. In somebody else's bank, right? Yeah. That bank crashes. Right. We're fucked for my money. Well, I still have real estate. Excuse me? I still have real estate. Well, real, estate real estate is good, too, but it's just not def nothing's definite. You might fall on hard times and have to sell it for somebody that you love or something. Nothing's definite in life. I always prepare my life for nothing and don't expect anything, even though I receive a lot. Me, too. Yeah, I never ask and never wish for anything good, only for other people. Were you like that always? No. I had to learn that loving yourself is not buying a new car for yourself or buying a prostitute. It's buying somebody else a new car. <laughs> Giving for yourself is not love, but to other people is love. Okay. It's not, it means funny, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But I don't know. I just, I mean, that's, to me, security is everything. Uh, listen, this is what I always tell my friends. If you think a whole bunch of money is going to make you happy... Um, you never had a whole bunch of money before. Because a whole bunch of money puts a person and me and you in a situation like, wow, I don't own that. I don't deserve this. I come from scum. Why do I have this? We get, uh, what's that called again? Survivor's guilt. Mm -hmm. And some of people throw their money away, give it away, till they're mature enough to realize they've been touched. And um, that's why they're different. What's, uh... I have a friend like that. He has Got up prison for like 40 something years. Um, he got a great um, settlement from the state. He has to do all that money. Never had money in his life, don't still know what to do. Yeah. So dangerous. He's a dangerous person walking the street with all that money, not knowing what to do with it. I just don't want to, I just, I have, I, I still, I'm working on it, but I still have a great fear of being poor again. You know? I still have that that fear, and it's. I won't say it's great. Uh, let's say and broke. It, broke uh, is another uh, word. Broke is good. Poor is frame of mind. Broke has no money. I like broke. The word broke is good. You're well, afraid of being broke again. Yeah. Yeah, and that's 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 like. I'm working on it. It's not as a, as great as a fear as it used to be. It's it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, um, and everything. You know, because as you realize, it's not about the money, it's about the security. Yeah. And if you have security, it doesn't matter where you live. You know what I mean? Just as long as you exactly. have, a, you know, a roof over your head and you have love in that house and the house is a home, you're good. You know, but, you know, but still, <laughs> poverty is a, is a cruel, cruel, cruel lover. Listen, I had a lot of money before when I was a kid. And I always, that being poverty struck and don't care how much money you have it. You always remember it. Can't forget it. Poverty. Yeah. You're right. But I'm not afraid of it. I'll I'll go back. I'm not afraid of poverty. It wasn't you would go. Out. You would go back to living in Brownsville. Absolutely. And you would be fine. I'll be great. In the projects. Yes. Well, I'm not gonna live in the project. I'm gonna live in the <laughs> slum houses and shit. I ain't gonna live in the project. No, and yeah. you'd be fine. I'll have to be fine. Okay. 
Rosie, you also grew up in New York, right? I don't have the shame. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't have the shame like most people. You may know. I just don't have this shame. And then um, and then Brownsville, I would be a beast there, too. Right. I don't have, I shame. I don't have shame about it. It's that, for me, it's, it's the danger element. You know what I mean? That I would have to... You're different. You're a man. I'm a woman. No, it's a different, it's, it's, it's a different listen, dynamic. It's tougher women down there than me. You know, the deal is that um, I'm from there, and no one's going to chase me out of there. Right. And that's just what it is. Well, I'm from Brooklyn, too. Uh, I still live in Brooklyn. Oh, right. Okay. I, I moved back to Brooklyn, and I remember I had this representative, and she was like, you're, you're afraid of success. I said, no, I'm not afraid of success. And I said, part of my success is coming home. And, and so you got it all wrong. And, and, um, and when I brought my house in Brooklyn, everybody thought, like, I was insane. Now... Everybody wants to live in Brooklyn. Everybody lives in Brooklyn. Everybody wants to live in Brooklyn. My whole neighborhood, I used to live as all Jewish, and now, of course, for 117, it's all beautiful. No, it's getting even Brownsville? more gentrified yeah. where, where, where you came from. No, not Brownsville, but Best Stuy. Okay. Oh, Best Stuy, forget it. It's a wrap. Yeah, Best Stuy is a wrap. It's a wrap. It's completely That's crazy. gentrified. Wow. Completely. Wow. You still have a Berkeley. Yep. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Still, everywhere. You know, it's you everywhere. Yeah. You know, but forget about it. It's like, I remember one time I was I was coming but off. But gentrification. I was driving, you know where the the um where 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 Bedford the Triangle Bedford and Lee Avenue is. By, I know by the, Lee Avenue. That's that's um. The I, Hasidic. I know where all the Jewish people and all the um the delis and stuff at. Yeah. I used to go to one of those special ed schools around there. The kid at Avenue A. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god help me. I first grew up on Lee Avenue in yeah. Wadabout. Oh yeah, that's in the Hasidic community. I and there's no other way you could be it that it's just a trip. Yeah. They're all there. Hey, you get good good blintzes, good bagels and, and Ooh, yeah, good but bagels and there, right? awesome. <laughs> yeah. all, all the, they have a Russ and Daughters now in Brooklyn. Really? What's Russ and Daughters? It's an appetizer yeah. deli. Okay. Appetizing deli. Do okay. you know what that means? I don't. No. Is it appetizer like... deli is 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 a Jewish deli where they sell lox and bagels. Kanish. And Remember Kanish? That's a, that's a good yeah. Kanish. I love uh, a good Kanish. Uh, mustard yeah. on top. Mustard. Good oh, corned beef sandwich. Uh, what? <laughs> what? What? When we were hustling on the street, you know, we're jostling and snatching <laughs> chains. And after we get our money, we just get some Kanish. We go into Burger King or we go to a little stand thick and Kanish put all the ketchup <laughs> and mustard on it. Yes, oh, the kids. so good. I love a good Jewish deli. Yeah, so it's like that. New York's the best. I mean, it's, it's hard so, to... It's so, so, so good. You got but some of the best food in the world. I was on Bedford and, and, and Lee, and I screamed. I was driving with my husband, and I was like, oh, my God, look, it's a, it's a hipster bum. It was the first time I saw a hipster, a hipster begging for money. What the fuck is a hipster? I'm still trying to figure out what a, exactly a hipster is. But, you know... What, was a hipster? what, what is a hipster to a be hipster giving out is... money? How does a hipster have money? Is what? a hipster a human being? Yeah, it's yeah. a way it's st- oh. someone's style, the way they are, the way yeah. okay. it's like they dress their culture. Their... type of style, yeah. Yeah. you know, where they try to look like a beatnik in the 21st century, you know what I mean? And act like they don't care about life and, you know. They're dangerous. Uh, yeah, and all this stuff. <laughs> but I saw someone standing there saying, uh, coins, you know, have any coins. And I was shocked because seeing that in Brooklyn, you would never see that in Brooklyn. And Mike, that's a, that's, that's a true ju- uh, gentrification. That's a hipster right there. That's a hipsters. You see them? Huh? Do you want to taste them? They look like fucking <laughs> um, lumberjacks. Um, yeah. And um, it was so sad. I gave them money. You did? I did. For what? I gave them money. I gave them, a, I gave them money and a bag of potato chips. You know. They look that bad? They look that bad. They look that bad. They, they look like they were, they were severely fiending on drugs. It was really, really sad. Um, but yeah, that's, that's parts, that's deep in Williamsburg. You know? Yeah, man. Williamsburg's in the 70s. Used to be a bunch of Puerto Ricans. Yeah. It changed, uh huh. And Williamsburg yeah. was Puerto Rican heaven. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why I was born in Williamsburg, mm-hmm. in, in Greenpoint Hospital. Greenpoint, too, yeah. That was, that was a dangerous neighbor, but it was a lot of Puerto Ricans there. They used to always be fighting us and shit. 
<laughs> Rosie, do you ever live out here? Yes, I do. Do you ever do. live in L.A.? Being in the Hollywood scene? I lived in L.A. And... when I went to college here in L.A. Okay. And I also... You've been to college? What college you been to? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of shit under your belt. <laughs> I, I, I failed a GED twice. I'm double dumb. <laughs> you got a fucking graduating degree. What the fuck, man? You got how many degrees you have? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't finish. I didn't God get my degree because I met Spike Rosie. Lee. Yeah. yeah. But I also lived out here. I came back uh, when I did a living color. Okay. But okay. but I would fly back and forth all the time. And oh, I you would give a living color. They had to get you off. You take all attention, huh? Oh, no. Living color. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, 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 right? They said, now she's teaching us too good. Yeah. I, I, I left when um, Keenan left. Yeah. I left in Living Color. My, my assistant, um, he took over, Arthur Rainier. But um, yeah, that's when I was, that's also. And then after that gig, I said, I don't want to live in LA. So, what point did you come across? When did Spike Lee and you connect? And how when did I was, that, and that was started your no, acting in, career? Yes, in my second year of college. In my second year of college, I was going to go back to New York and hopefully transfer to Stony Brook. You know Stony Fuck Brook? Fuck that shit. They were you who <laughs> and you then I met Spike Lee. Exactly. It was meant for you to be who you are, man. It was written. Yeah. Was yeah. that in the early eight, late 80s, early 90s? or? Um, it was in 1988. Okay. Middle wow. 80s. In the mm-hmm. 80s. Just a few years before uh, White Man Can't Jump. Yeah. Right on. So, so um, Do the Right Thing was filmed in 88. Even though they okay. said the song 1989 yeah. the, uh, with uh, uh, Public Enemy <sighs> and stuff. And, um, and they had my big poster of me on the wall. That's right. Really? Yeah, when I was a little kid. You, you're the cool. reason why, um, did Spike ever tell you? What? You're the reason why he put me in the, um, the boxing outfit for the opening credits. Oh, yeah, when you were dancing with the boxing outfit? Yeah. And I was so mad because my punches looked like garbage. Hey, it looked beautiful. I, told you. <laughs> it looked... I was so tired. I was so, so tired. We shot you that for eight hours. You were seductively, beautifully punched. Oh, there you go. But but he was the reason. Cause, uh, what made you become a uh, choreographer? The... How did you become that? What made you want to, What made you think, I could teach these bitches how to dance better? <laughs> <laughs> No, really, right? You so that's what you did. Oh, I can help them so much. They're big stars, they just don't know. They just don't got that magic. I can give them that magic. Do you think like that? Yeah. Yeah, this you have to think. Um, they need the magic. I'm the magic, and they have talent, but they don't have the magic. Well, the way I became a choreographer was I was still a college student. And for what? For what to the school for science? That's what you're yeah, biochemistry. About? And. And the talent scout from Soul Train came and asked me to be on Soul Train. And I said, only if my girlfriends go, come. And they said, are they hot? I said, yeah, they're hot. So he allowed them, us all to go. And Is the biochemist like internalist? No. All right, what is it? Tell me about bio. What, what are you biochemistry, doing? I was doing organic biology. That okay, means like cool. life, you know, and all this stuff. And I wanted to concentrate on, on, um, on sea creatures like urchins and all that kind of stuff. And um, starfishes and, and and everything, and but you had to major in biochemistry to go ahead and. My daughter's one of those people. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, while I was at Please, keep um, Soul Train, um, a record company executive, Lil Silas Jr. from MCA Records. Lil Cyrus. Lil Silas. Oh, Silas. And he comes and he saw me dancing hip hop off camera, and he goes, "How come you don't dance that on camera?" And I said. Don Cornelius won't allow us. He doesn't like hip hop. And that was a big secret back then. And he goes, well, can you teach that to my, a new recording artist? He's going to leave his group. I said, who is he? He goes, it's a secret. Just tell me, can you teach it to him? I said, I'm not a choreographer. And he said, I'll pay you $1,600 a day. I said, I'll be there Monday. And that's how I became a choreographer. And that recording artist was Bobby Brown. So that was my first client. Wow. Listen, I met Dinah Ross one day, and I, I, I became a little softer for some reason. I was just so happy to be in her presence. She took a picture of my daughter, and that's, that's awesome. Wow. That's the best picture in my house. She had the same effect on me, because she was supposed to come to rehearsal for three weeks. I was supposed to teach her hip-hop. Yeah. She never came to one <laughs> fucking rehearsal. She didn't show up. So when the day of the music she's video, the boss. yeah, because she's the <laughs> boss. When the music video, um, Tracy Ross goes, "Hi, I'm Tracy Ross." I said, "Hi, would you like to meet uh, my mom?" I go, "Fine," you know, because I still was like kind of pissed off that she didn't come. Oh, she can show you. And she too. opened the door and she went, "Hi," I went, "Hi," and I just melted. I melted, and she was fantastic. She's 
fabulous. She's stunning. She's amazing. And everybody know, don't fuck with her. Yeah. Do you know that part of it? That side yeah. of it? Yeah, don't fuck with the boss. Yeah, yeah. Well, sounds, she, sounds like she has some good energy. Just from huh? both of you guys' experiences with her. Yeah. Like just the energy she, she gives she off. Big, she has a big, 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 big heart. But at the same time... She don't take no shit. She's, tough. she's in charge. I mean, that's why she lasted so long. Yeah. You know that's what I'm saying? She's the boss. She's yeah. the boss before Springsteen was. You want me to ask the questions? Yeah, go for it, nigga. No, it, but it, tell us... Tell expose us. yourself. Self, Self-analyzation. <laughs> Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano. Oh, I was woman. at that fight. It was the women's fight. It was the first uh, main, female main event at the Garden, Madison Square Garden. It was a banger. Those two girls went at it. I thought it was a draw. They gave it to Katie Taylor. Uh, she did have all the belts, so but they should have called it a draw and then given her the belt. You know, by split decision. I feel you know, that's your opinion. That's my opinion. Right, so we, can we talk more about boxing then? Yeah. All right. So check this out. What do you think about Canelo losing? I thought that it was, I, I thought he lost. I thought he lost, but what do you think? That, do you think it was his time, he's getting too old, or he's too soft with all the money that he possessed? What do you think the reason that he actually lost? Because this guy just really used some real basic stuff to beat him. He did. And almost knocked him out. I think, you know, I, I, I have nothing against Canelo. I think he's a fine man. You know, some people say this and that about him. I don't care about all that stuff, right? But I think what happened was his ego got in the way. He thought that he could take on a bigger man. You know, wasn't he's it? He's done it before, though. It's he's not done like it he before, but not, not Bevo, he didn't study him. He wasn't ready for him. He overlooked him. He shouldn't have overlooked him. He should have gotten very, agree, very serious too. about him. You I know? agree 100% he's, that he overlooked him. I'm a fighter. I know how that goes. You say, I beat everybody else. How can I beat this bum? And he probably, but listen, I, if he gets, if he builds his desire up and really wants to fight and go all out, you know, win or nothing, I think he'd, be, he'd give a better, um, Performance in the last one. Yeah. Well, he's going to fight Triple G. Who you got now? For- Who's going to fight Triple G? Canelo. He's going to fight. Uh, they made it official. Why is he going to fight after Triple G after he got his ass kicked? <laughs> he, he, he wanted to. He said he wanted. He put Triple G on the fence for forever. As soon as he lost to Bevo, he went and he said, okay, I'm ready to fight Triple G. And so there will be just, their third match. The guy has so much money, though. They're paying him for these fights. It's really. He's been getting a lot of money. This guy. He's getting from, heavyweight from, money. From uh, Matchroom Boxing, DAZN? No, I'm talking about that he's making money, this guy Canelo. Well, they he's said making that his heavyweight pa- money. They said his pay-per-view numbers were great, but not for his level. Listen, he has so much endorsement. He's like a superstar. He is a superstar. He doesn't have to fight. He, he doesn't. doesn't. He does not have to fight. I don't know why he doesn't get hit and hurt. That's he, funny because when people, be over for people say, would you ever go into boxing? I go, no, I don't like to get hit. I used to, I used to get in fights all the time. I don't like it. And they say, well, why do you like to watch it? And I go, that's a good question. <laughs> Listen, you know what you don't know about yourself? You think you don't like to get hit until you really get hit. Or you're, or you're back against the wall and you have to fight for your life. Then you really know if you're a fighter or not. Yes. Yes. I used to get my, I used to get my ass kicked when I was younger. And then I got tired of getting my ass kicked. And we all. And that's how I learned how to fight. I started, like, fighting back. And even if you had me on the ground, I would go, is that all you got? I would get back up, you know, oh, limping. Oh, no. Nigga had me on the ground. I'm spitting in his face. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. such a sick guy. Yeah, yeah. But that's street fighting for you. Yeah. And, and you have to be like that. You, you have to. And, um, and then there was this one girl, the last fight I ever had, this one girl, um, she overlooked me. And uh, it was ugly. And after that, nobody tested me. Everybody just left me alone. They were like, oh, my God, this bitch is crazy. Yeah, pulling the fuck? neighborhood down. Neighborhood, nobody fucks with you anymore. Yep. Yep. But I like it. The first fight I ever cried at was um, Willie Benitez Jr. versus um, Sugar Ray Leonard. Do you remember that fight? Wolfie Benitez. Yeah. I'm afraid of. Uh, he, he trained in my camp when I was a little, but he, he was did. a bad ass. Yeah, he was. A, he didn't train really that good for, good for that. Um, Leonard's fight and stuff. He was dating Leonard's sister while he was fighting. He was. Yeah. Oh my god. Benita is such a bad motherfucker, man. You saw how easy he beat Duran. Duran's master fight, vicious animal. He beat him so easy. 
Yeah. He was my favorite fighter. Such a great fighter. He was mine for a while, too. And then Marvin Hagler. Ooh. But then, and then um, Duran came. Oh, watch. Oh, I'm going to watch this shit. Oh, no. <sighs> Listen. Put it on the second round. When he dropped Benitez and Benitez give up, comes up and put a box in exposition like no fuck. Well, you're 79. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. This is the first fight I've ever seen. This is the first fight you ever saw? I was locked up seeing this fight in juvenile detention. This guy's been champion of the world since he's been 17 years 17 old. 17 years old. Well, look at try to hit him. Oh, God damn. <laughs> look, look at this man. Oh, try to hit this guy. Look at this guy, man. <laughs> whoa, he's like, whoa. He gets me excited, this guy. I love this fight. I haven't seen this in so long. I did not know he dated his Nana sister. His sister, yeah. Did Sugar Ray, was Sugar Ray cool with that? I don't know. Oh, no, look at this round. He drops in this <laughs> round. Wow, look at him moving his head. Yeah, he's good. That that. Well, when I watch Ooh. when he watch, get watch, up. He go, he go, he go. Now this is where it happens. This is where it happens. He's gonna try to kill this guy. Watch this shit. This is watch this shit. Oh come oh, on! God. Man, do you remember the way Devonte Davis served that uppercut to Leo Santa Cruz? My God. God. He killed him. I did too. Oh, he's, gonna, he's the man to beat in that division. Top guys got to fight him like Shakur, Haney. Everyone got to um, put it in their hat. Um, not even, um, what's the guy, the Ukrainian guy has to be even put in his hat. You have to get the... Well, Ooh, Lomachenko? To, uh, Lomachenko, yeah. You have to, you have to put, because he's still a good threat too as well. He is. Did you think it was a fluke that he lost to Teofimo Lopez? No. Or was it the issue about that he ripped his rotator cuff? Well, listen, um, that's just excuses. He just got over four. He just out four of them. I smart him. He's stronger than him. And that's just what it was. Everybody has excuses when they lose. Right. No one has excuses that they won. But when you get this level of the game, only the smartest win. That's why that guy, Usyk, beat the shit out of Joshua. He, he was smart, too fast. His jab was too too fast. So if um, Joshua don't know how to put the pressure and use his jab, same thing's going to happen. Yeah. He has to use his hook and his jab. Man, I was there at the Ruiz uh, uh, Joshua fight, mm -hmm. and I was sitting next to um, the champ, uh, Clarissa Shields. Oh, she's serious. She's serious. She's serious. So we're all rooting for, you know, Joshua. Then there's a Latino in there, and I said, oh, my God, he's going to win. And she looked at me with the meanest look, and I went, I'm sorry. <laughs> she was like she wanted to punch me in the face. And I said, I think he's good. And then when he won. He banged him. Oh, my God, that shot. Everyone has a chance. That's what God allowed everyone the chance if they, if they try. Rosie, you still fight? You train, fight still? I, have, I threw out my back, so I'm not in the greatest shape right now. Uh, I haven't been able to um, train for like three months, but I, I train at, um, I used to train at Trinity uh, and down uh, by, you know, uh, Tribeca. And um, the two brothers, they the, the one brother, uh, Jon Snow, who um, trains me, he opened up a boxing gym in Midtown called Victory Boxing, so I still go over there. Um, he goes slow with me, you know, I, I, I at times I, I, I think I'm younger. And you than hurt I am. yourself, huh? And I hurt myself, exactly. <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah. And he's always telling me, slow down. My wife is always saying, slow down, baby, okay? Slow down. You're not as young and strong as you want. What do you mean I'm not as young and strong as I am? Exactly. Oh, come on, baby, baby, put the machine on me. I'm hurt. Yeah. But I love, I love boxing. I love it. I love it. And um, you know, because I have a fat gene in my family. <laughs> so I should be like Right now. In the same way. Yeah. And so it's the boxing is what, because it's the only thing that I don't get bored at. I go, I get bored being at a gym. I do. Just lifting weights just, or whatever I, it is. It's just not, Treadmills. it's just not me. It's just not who I am. And and so boxing took the place of dancing. Okay. And. Um, it's incredible cardio. Yeah. Getting but I also workout. used to um, uh, study Kung Fu and that changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. 
It changed my life. It would kick a bitch or anything. Yeah, if you see the picture, <laughs> show the picture on my Instagram. I I trained with um, uh, Sifu Shi Yaming from, from the from? Shaolin Temple, yeah. all the way down. That's me and Sixto in the car. That's Sixto. Ooh, you're looking good. That you looking good right there. That's not you, right? Damn, oh, that's a good picture right there with the hat. Oh, what are you trying hat? to do? Oh, that's my natural hair, yeah? Oh, cool. Um, that's my aunt who raised me. Uh, when she have a hair? Yeah. Um, Who's that fighter? Uh, that's Ryan Garcia. And he looks like him. He's a good fighter, too. He's a good fighter, too. He gets a lot of crap, but he's a good fighter. Oh, did, did I take it down? Uh, what did you take down? You didn't tell me her, I see. Or maybe you pissed. No, I, may, I think I took it then, down then. Uh, what was it? Yeah, tired of my it's black It's me and my, and my seafood is and it, um, uh, uh, training. Okay. And I, um, I, I was great at high kicks. My sidekick was sick. I was great at um, sword fighting. So you tell me you can kick a bitch oh, ass wow. right she this second. Off. Right this second you'll no, kick. No, I, I probably, I'll probably like pull a muscle. I'll okay. probably pull a groin muscle if I tried it like right now. There goes me and you when oh, we were younger. Look, oh, at, look, that. look, look at that. Look at that. We were young. Look how young. Oh, there goes young Floyd. Y'all don't look as good as we look then. Yeah, look right there. Why right you? There. Look why, at that. Why? Oh, look at that baby. Ah! That's you. Look at that baby. Oh, my God. How old is she? Look at my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, that's when I only used to wear lipstick. You know, makeup wise. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Where were we? Um, somewhere with the boys. The band, right? Yeah, the, the boys group. who idolized you. Yeah, I choreographed them. And um What year is that? I don't remember. Late eighties, maybe? No, I think it, early nineties. I would I would say, and I remember everybody because back then it wasn't a thing that I was wearing a men's suit and a men's tie. Everybody was like, "What is she wearing?" <laughs> Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. I don't even look like that no more, Dad. Right? I don't look like Dad then. Huh? You look like this guy now. Yeah, a little bit. That's that's part of it. Genetic. Yeah, I don't look like that either. <laughs> uh, tell us about your experience on Soul Train. How did you miss Mr. How did you meet Mr. Cornelius? How um, did you get the job anyway to meet the guy? I already told you. I was in a nightclub dancing with my girlfriends after a science lab class, and and a somebody told you to come dance. No, we used to go to the club all the time. We would go there early because it was ladies' nights for free, so we could sneak in for free, and and then a talent scout from Soul Train was looking for dancers, and he pointed me out and said, would you like to dance on Soul Train? And that was it. Nobody never pointed me out for anything. It's gone. One, she, one just looked at you and said, you, you deserve to be on Soul Train. Well, I was dancing, yeah. too. I was dancing. So when that happened, what did you think? This? I thought it was just for fun. Really? I did. And so that's why I used to dance so crazy, because we thought it was silly and fun, and I didn't understand. You thought that was silly the way you were dancing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. And, and, um... Anybody have their opinion, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it was silly, yeah. I think it was <laughs> real silly. And I stopped because my father called me, mm -hmm. and it finally got to Puerto Rico, and he was like, why are you dancing like that? Stopped. Didn't go back. Because it upset him. I was like, you know. Times has changed, Dad. I know, but that's some Puerto Rican thing. You know, that's the Puerto Rican thing. Do they still do that? The man runs the family, he's the boss, he's the rule. They don't do that no more. Do no, they? they don't really do that anymore. Because basically the men really didn't run the, it was really they the woman. The did, woman yeah. let him um, uh, uh, do that. Oh, I, I wish you would find that thing. It's so amazing. Maybe I can Google it. Um... Sifu Shi Yaming, uh, Shaolin Temple. It's on his Instagram, I think, too. So anyway, so you got this, you got this, you got that, and what other... We got a lot of shit. So the hottest thing right now is the yeah, mic bites, the ears. Have you seen those? No. So they're so gummy ears 
with a bite out of him. Like a vanity. Um, <laughs> no, you did not. It's um, did I show up, Mike? No, you did I don't not. Have, there's, it's a, there's no gummies oh, in this one. Nigga, who it's got an ear with a bite out of the ear, and it's in a gummy form. We have uh, sour apple, watermelon, uh, mixed berry, and now we got chocolate ears coming out, lollipop ears. I got to show you. It's not a van this year, but... Do yeah. you remember what you said to me after that fight? I think. We saw each other at Cheetahs. Remember okay. Cheetahs, the club Cheetahs? You want me to say this off camera? In, in New York. Is it the year? Oh, the that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to bring that home. We'll get you We'll get you some bags. Um, okay, what I say after the fight? Yeah, milk and white chocolate. Uh, okay, we're going to hear what I said after the fight to Rosie after a bit Van the Zeal. Go ahead. What I say with it. You came back to New York. You walked into Cheetahs. You walked in, and everybody was so in awe and terrified of you at the same time. It Fuck. was like... I was like that back then? Yes. It was like... It was like Moses parting the, the the Red Sea. Everybody just moved the fuck out of your way. And I was standing uh, toward the back, and you went, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm good. And I said, what the fuck were you thinking? And you laughed, and you, and you hugged me, and you said in my ear, you said, that motherfucker just got me so fucking mad. <laughs> 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 Oh, my God. Uh, he fucking headbutted me, man. <laughs> Little fucker. Do you remember that time we was in a club and this guy pulled a gun out on my sister Sally? <laughs> and you, and you, I didn't know what to do, right? Everybody was like freaking out. And, oh, and he God. was standing, it was at Red Zone. It was at Red Zone. Red Parrot, Red Zone. Red Zone. And, and we, and uh, it was Puffy Night. And we, I go, I go climb up uh, the stairs. I see Mike. I don't know why I said, get Mike Tyson. The guy has a gun. I go, get Mike Tyson, my head. So I go, I go up there and I said, Mike, Mike, look down there. The, uh, the guy pulled a gun on, on my sister because cause she wouldn't dance with him. And you went, let me go talk to him. And, <laughs> and you went right down to him, went up to him like this, his gun. Like put like this, your finger, like if you have a gun, right? And you went, you, the Mike went, come on. Come on. <laughs> And that oh was it. <laughs> Holy that was shit. it. And the I, bodyguards came in and threw the guy out. I used to be crazy when I was younger. Oh my gosh. Holy that shit. was so funny. And then, I have so, I have so many stories. Do you Ooh. remember with Naomi Campbell? Oh, what happened? You were at MK's. Remember that that nightclub? Yeah. Okay. You were with Naomi Campbell. And she had hair all the way down to here. I'm not saying nothing. I don't want to say nothing. <laughs> I don't want to hear nobody. She had hair down to there. And I love the hair. I love Naomi. I love Naomi too. She's a <laughs> badass. Are you kidding? I love that lady. I love Naomi. And she was whipping her hair back and forth. And it hit my sister. And my sister said to you, who's the lady with the horse hair? <laughs> And you live so hard. You live so hard. And Naomi is such a badass. She stepped right in front of my uh, sister's face and she goes, say that shit to my face. And you live so hard. So hard. And I was like, oh my gosh, I thought there was going to be a fight. And you went right in between them. And you're like, all right, ladies, calm down. Naomi, and that you was always it. talk about she's going to fight somebody. So I want to see her fight somebody. Why? Because she always talk about what she's going to do to somebody. Okay. Sometimes she does it. I do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her. I love her, and she still looks fantastic. Naomi will beat your ass, though, guys. Don't unnecessarily. Yeah, don't. Uh, no, I, I, w I would not want to get in a fight with her. Here it is. Want. Let us know. Oh, you found it. You usually put everything. Well, that's you. That's me. Oh, uh, look, put that shit in there. This is the kick? Oh, look at that kick, man. Oh, shit. Like blood sport right here, John Claude Van Damme. Can you do it right this second? That's hell crazy. no. Why not? I was just gonna say hell, hell yeah. Holy shit. No. Do you see how high that shit is? You can do it right here and then hide in that ceiling. No, 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 no. I'm not even gonna try to play myself right now. You, did you do kickboxing? Uh, you kickboxing? No, I didn't do kickboxing. That's impressive. No. Look, look over there, right after the guilty thing. Did you hear me? Yeah. Right after. Just hold it, hold it up. I'll get it on the camera. Oh. So what's the deal? Do these um, Charlene guys, do they have sex? The who? I don't know. Why are you going to ask Which me guess? something oh. like that? I don't know if they have sex or not. Have what? you read about them having sex or anything? Yeah, there you go. That's my seafood. She yummy. He doesn't look like he wants sex. He has kids. He defected. 
and oh, came yeah. to the United States, yeah. And well, then you... press the button, the arrow button, and that's the kid. Wow. That's very impressive. I just don't understand why you can't do it right the second. Because I haven't trained. I'm not going to hurt myself. Yeah. My, I'm old. You're not old, baby. Trust me. Okay, I'm older. You're, you're mature. I'm mature. Okay, I like that. I'm mature. This is like what I say before. We let one man dominate our way of thinking about ourselves. This guy, Julius Caesar, said 330, 65 days is a year. And before that, how do we tell our age? You know, before this guy Caesar came around. So how old are you really? Because he said that's how old we are. Motherfucker that's dead now. He didn't live forever, told us how old we are. We might be 10,000 years old. Who knows? We don't know. I like getting older. Uh, I like it a lot. I do? I do. I don't like, like, my body getting older, Falling but apart. I like Falling this apart. getting older. I like it a lot. It is what it is. Life is just a beautiful process of dying. And, it's all, and, it's been, and it's a, as soon as it starts, the process begins. Mm. Do you believe in life after death? Like, just a... Coming back as a honestly, I believe spirit. that I don't know everything. That's what I believe in. I believe in gathering as much information as possible. I'm still not knowing, anything. and still not knowing. And I think that that's true wisdom. You know what I mean? And the humility to admit it. You yeah. know, you know what I'm saying. So I, I mean, I grew up in the Catholic Church, and I'm like, I don't know if that's real or not. I don't know. And you know, I studied Kung Fu and studied Buddhism, and I'm like. That is beautiful. I don't know if that's real or not. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just trying to open and expand my mind as possible. And, and we don't and know what's real, but we can make it real. That's true. We can make it real. What do you think about Errol Smith and Terrence Crawford? Oh my God! Defining fight. They both, both fight. Them. They're both great fighters. Yes, for both of them. And I'm a fan of each of them. Um, I've been a fan of Terrence Crawford longer. Um, you know, but Earl Spence Jr.'s last fight against Ugas. That was hell. What? He looked good in that fight. He sure did. And oh my God, what about Derek James, the trainer? What happened to him? He helped him win that fight. What'd he do? He snapped him out of it. He did get dropped too, right? The guy dropped him. I didn't see all that. I used to He dropped him because he, he didn't, it, he said it was a rookie mistake. It was protect yourself at all times. He was trying to talk to the ref and everything, and, and Ugas just clipped him. And, and, it was um, a good fight. Yeah, it but it wasn't but, easy. But um, that's when Derek James, like, you know, people don't always. I see on these boxing shows, they don't always give the accolades to trainers that they should. Some trainers are BS, but there's a lot of trainers that I think that are not. Do you agree with me or not? Hey, sometimes you have to take the the role as the invisible man. So all, all, the, all the accolades, all the glory goes to that man that ring. Only glory you get is what you get when he opens his mouth and congratulates you. The glory goes to him. Whoever he gives it to, God, whoever, but he says him to give it to him. He put in the work. He got beat up. That's the real that We helped him not to get beat up, but as much as he's in there, it was all up to him. Would you? Would you ever train a fighter? Are you? Do you train fighters? I don't have that kind of patience. Right. I'm not going to wake up every morning, get this guy up, make sure he's running, doing his exercise and all that stuff. I, I took all the punches for my, my children and didn't have to take any punches. I, I don't have time. I have business to do. I don't have time to be in the, the gym every day, all day. That's what a trainer does. He's in the gym every day. That's the job. Every day, all day. Okay in the gym. So I'd rather be making $8 million somewhere than being in the gym all day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> being sweaty. Yeah. Getting mad at some kids because he hasn't done he, he didn't do what I asked him to do. He does it every day when I'm not home. I'm not at the gym, but when I'm near, he doesn't do it. Mm. Talking to a kid about his family problems. Listen, when you're a trainer, you're, you're, um, you're a psychiatrist, you're a mother, you're a father, um, you're a stepfather, you're an uncle, you're everything. Right. Wait a minute. Let's go back to who do you think will win, Earl Spence or Terrence Crawford? I like Crawford a lot. 
after that last fight, it was, was going to be interesting. Right. He beat um, Porter with, with rather ease. And Porter, I think, beat Nussman. Ugas. Ugas. I believe he beat Ogus before a distance. It's going to be interesting. I like Crawford, but it ain't going to be an easy fight, I don't think. If it's an easy fight, I, I, I drop that. <laughs> this is really going to be interesting. I'm going to make sure I'm there. I want to be God there, willing. too. God willing. If I'm alive, I like to go. And you go to a lot of M M MMAs. Yeah, I like I to go there because a lot of excitement there. You go there and it's, um, the fight's over and in the media, we're partying in there. Really? Yeah, you never been to one? I went to one before it was UFC. Oh, man, it's and a party. I've never been to a it's UFC a fight. Never it's been. Club. Really? Vegas is a club. Yeah, we've been. Yeah, yeah, you've been to a few times. It's a club, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Incredible. Amazing environment. No. Are you an MMA fan? Beautiful. Yeah, people. I watch. I watch MMA. Okay. Yeah, it's I not, do. You haven't been. I'm not as knowledgeable in that medium as I am in, in as in boxing, boxing, but but um, I do like it. I do like it. Um, who is that? Who is that? Um, oh gosh, Brazilian fighter with the with the blonde hair that just won. Very like. Stringy muscle. Look him up, the Brazilian guy with the blonde hair. Alex Salisbury. Yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. Just like that type of MMA fight, yeah, okay. I like a lot. You like that? Yeah. Why? I like a, Why? That was the main event. Yeah. Because it's what you were saying earlier. He thinks, like, in nanoseconds. You know what I mean? He can he could get oh, knocked down. His reaction down. time is unbelievable. The right? way he, it's it, sick. crazy, it's crazy sick. to He's watch so him fight. Smart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know, like you know, like I when, didn't think he was gonna. Honestly, he's he's been on fire, and I thought this was gonna be the one that he possibly possibly lost. Who well, guess who? He fought uh, what's a white guy's name? Big uh, shit. Yes. Ooh, get you the bad motherfucker. Huh? I interviewed him too. You didn't see this fight? Oh, let's see it. Then. You gotta see it. Yeah. It's crazy. I thought he had him. I thought he had, but this other guy. The reaction time is crazy. Like he just he's so fast to turn and move. You know. I have to be honest, I I don't want to say who, but somebody told me, they were like, you wouldn't enjoy a, a UFC fight. And I said, why? And they said, the crowd is just too crazy. I, said, I love them. That's you would love, what you like. You would be so yeah. enthused, baby. You go all the time. It is different from boxing. You make so many new is, friends. The crowd is very different. It's from very, boxing. very different, yeah. right? Is there like a lot of testosterone in the? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This guy's afraid of nobody. Got in the blue. He's not afraid of anyone. But it's probably, there's a lot of women that go there. Really? Of, yeah, for sure. There is. Yeah. Yeah. I prefer boxing. You prefer boxing. I prefer boxing, but I like MMA. I hate when people say, boxing "Oh, you got to choose." You don't Ooh. have to choose. You saw that? You saw that yeah. drop? You got dropped. Yeah. Yeah. They, and watch. True. <laughs> Mm, mm. Somebody, ooh, playing that game. Right. Trying to warn him on the strike, he's back, right. on the floor, right? Yeah. Come on, Justin, hit now, that. Now, see, did floor. the ref tell him to get up, or did he get up on his own? Get up. I think, I think Knock him ref, down before he can get up again, play. Justin. Punch. You got to punch, man. Is it a, is Waiting it a too action? long. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This was a great fight. It's a great fight. He's always in great fights, this guy. Well, that's all I need. How did it end? I got sick. Submission, right? Isn't that how it ended? Did you take him out? I think so. Right? I don't yeah. remember. I think so. His knees, man. You ever get kicked? Like kicked, kicked? Like a martial arts kick? Have you ever? I had some heavy kicks. Man. Man, man. You've done this? Never in my life. Would you do it just for the sport of it or the training of it? Only for money. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Awesome. Well, Rosie, thank you for coming out today and joining oh, us. You're leaving oh, us. Thank oh, it you for coming here by that was a, yourself. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, I didn't know we were rolling on those funny stories. I was just reminiscing with y'all. You know? <laughs> All right, Rosie. Yes, Mike. How many millions of people are watching her? A lot. A lot of millions. A lot of millions of people are watching you. Number one show 
on Lulu. But anyway, tell them what you want. Just tell them. Is there anything they need to know about you, your Instagram, your life, your family, your new um, occupation? Just anything. Talk to those people, millions. Oh, my goodness. Um, I want you to know that I try to be a good person. I'm trying not to be an asshole on a daily basis. I'm just trying to get out of my own way and just do amazing, amazing work and just keep striving for excellence. If there's anything that you want to know about me and that I'm corny as fuck, I really am. And I like it. I like it. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> and, um... I love boxing, as you guys know it, and and I'll never, ever, ever stop loving the sport. And I actually have a love-hate relationship with it, and nobody knows that. Um, and um, please watch my work, and, and please continue to support me because I truly, truly appreciate it because I'm nothing without you guys. So uh, I've got a new TV series on Apple. Uh, TV Plus. Latinos represent, okay? Represent. Yeah. Latino. Latino. It's called Now and Ay, Then. Ay, que lindo. Yeah, and okay. I, I speak... Uh, que linda. And linda. I speak Spanish throughout the, uh, uh, the, the series. <laughs> and um, what else do I want to say? Um, I think everybody should be nicer to each other. Sounds really like do. my wife here. Let's save the world. I do, I do, I do it. Yo, there's people who try to save me. So I like to try to pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? So, I learned this in life. No one can help the world, but everyone can help somebody. That's right. Yeah, I, I like that one. Yeah. So we can't do nothing with this. Uh -huh. It's been written already. Everything that's been written, all this stuff has been written before we, thousands of years, trillions of years before we've been born. So we have the great Rosie Perez with us. And we are so appreciative. Thank you very much, Rosie. Thank you so much. 